Hello and welcome to Peck Underground Church. I am your host, Josh Peck. I am very excited uh, for my guest today, Joe Jordan. He's been a longtime friend of mine. I've, I've interviewed him before. This is the first time that he's been on this channel, but if you follow into the multiverse, you've seen him on there. Uh, we interviewed him a couple of years ago live from Roswell, uh, which was which was a, an absolutely mind-blowing trip, and uh, he had a lot of interesting things to say. Today, we're going to be talking about official disclosure uh, and the secret behind official disclosure that not many people know about. There are new developments. If you think that you know what's going on, you might be surprised. There are brand new develop developments in this field, uh, You know what the government knows about UFOs, aliens, and how we as Christians are supposed to process this, uh, especially in light of things like alien abduction phenomena and stuff like that. What are we supposed to do? Uh, so before we get to uh, Joe Jordan, I just want to make a couple quick announcements. Uh, in the future, we are going to be having some more exciting guests. So our very next guest, guest on January 4th is going to be Gary Wayne, author of Genesis 6 Conspiracy. He's coming on that as Friday, January 4th. Um, and then after that, we also have uh, Dr. Michael Lake, Carl Tycrib, Ryan Peterson, Brian Gadawa, uh, Ken, Dr. Ken Johnson, Jen Doe, Dr. Michael Heiser. We got, we have a, a whole lineup of special guests. We have Joel Richardson coming on in March. Uh, so it, it's going to be a lot of fun. We got a lot of interesting guests for you. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to this channel, please click the bell. So YouTube notifies you. And if YouTube doesn't notify you, just check back on this channel every day. Every day you get new videos, Fridays and Saturdays, all Fridays, most Saturdays, you get Peck Underground Church. And that is what we're doing today. So without further ado, I'd love to welcome my special guest, Joe Jordan. Joe, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Josh. Uh, thank you for having me on. And, you know, if your watchers there saw us as live from Roswell at one time, well, how about live from South Korea? <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. You're all the way. You're you're on the other side of the world, and you're coming through. Uh, you're coming through clear, and and you look great. And it's uh, yeah, it's it's just great to talk to you again. It has been a very eventful uh, couple of years. Now, for those who might not be familiar, uh, but a bunch of people are pouring in the chat. This is great to see. Um, for those who might not be familiar with you or your work, uh, what is your specialty? Um, where where what what kind of organizations do you work with? Um, I know you're one of the leading experts in this field, so just just give people a brief introduction to you, and, and also just how you got to know Jesus and how that led to to your your amazing ministry today. Wow, that's a lot. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a try. Uh, first off, by profession, and the reason I'm here in South Korea is uh, I'm a safety specialist for um, top 100 company in the world, and. Um, we're supporting the American military over here in South Korea. I'm on a contract here with uh, about 130 other contractors that I make sure they, they go home every day with their all their fingers and all their toes. You know, that's what I do as a safety professional. Um, but what I started into as a side focus uh, 25 years ago was into the UFO field. Uh, one particular book caught my interest in down the rabbit hole I went, and uh, I had to get some answers on whether, it, if any of it was real or not. Um, my primary focus um, in the beginning was working with sighting investigations. But as the works got more and more involved uh, with people, I saw that the abduction experience, the front line uh, experience in this UFO realm, uh, you have one thing of chasing light in the sky and, and talking to people, you know, about their past uh, sighting experiences. But when you meet a person one to one and you're sitting there talking to them and they're telling you about being in contact with the entities that are actually behind the UFO phenomenon, that's frontline work. And that's where we decided to focus our work years ago. Uh, we formed a group called CE4 Research Group. And the reason we did that is because we were all MUFON members in the beginning, and we're still MUFON members, the, the ones I work with in the group. Uh, we wanted to stay representatives of MUFON because I have to give MUFON credit for the way that they trained us to do proper investigation techniques and to be able to, to ask the right questions and put the research together and document the research. But 25 years ago, when we started into this, um, 
there really wasn't a format for working with the duckies. So we set apart ourselves as a group called CE4 Research, decided we would do all of this as CE4 Research, working with the duction experiencers, but making sure that the information was available at any time and all the time uh, to any of our peers who wanted to look at it, including MUFON. Uh, we wanted to keep our credibility as researchers by maintaining our MUFON membership and our MUFON status. And I've been with MUFON for going on 25 years now. Uh, currently, I'm the National Director for South Korea. Um, I'm also on their STAR team in case anything super comes up that they got to send somebody to right quick in this area. Um, I'm able to do that for them. So a member of the Inner Circle. I became a member of the Inner Circle with MUFON this past year. Uh, it's something I wanted to be able to do for them. Uh, it's was through a generous contribution, and uh, that got me an opportunity to become a little closer with a lot of the benefactors with MUFON, a lot of the people that are behind the doors with it. And uh, that's kind of where I'm at now uh, in the research part of it. As far as what brought me to a Christian, um, I'm one of the few that can probably say that I came to Jesus Christ through UFOs. And people are going to go, yeah, that sounds kind of strange. <laughs> but, yeah, it was kind of strange to me, too. Um, in the beginning, when I first got into this field of research, agnostic humans, you know, I didn't believe in God. I believed in evolution. You know, I didn't believe there was a higher power. You know, you did what you did and lived your life and hit the ground you went. You know, so uh, live it to the fullest. You know, that was the kind of person I was. Uh, was raising my son at the time and working hard at a, at, a, at a factory that I worked at for 20 some years. And that's when I picked up that first book. And uh, as I delved into the UFO phenomenon, I also saw that there seemed to be a spiritual aspect to the phenomenon that um, I was warned about by MUFON to stay clear of. Uh, they were the new age metaphysical people that seem to be part of this phenomenon in some way and i couldn't separate that you know as an honest researcher i had to explore every avenue uh, of this phenomenon to be able to get an honest answer for what we were looking at and i i couldn't even though mufon was telling me steer clear because they couldn't look at that area you know with uh scientific investigation it was i was looking into the paranormal there was no structure for that. And uh, I understood that. I understood their, their reasoning for that. But as an honest researcher, I said, this can't be just pushed aside and not looked at. Why was the spiritual connection tied in with the UFO phenomenon? Why were these people attracted to this phenomenon? And I had to look at that deeper and deeper to find out what that connection was before I moved on. Well, as I did, it became, and I started questioning uh, these people's, you know, teachings and understandings that they had. Um, I got deeper and deeper into that phenomenon myself. I became involved in the metaphysics and the New Age uh, beliefs. I was actually at a point where um, I was converting my Christian friends into the New Age, uh, basically because they didn't really know what they knew, what they should have known as a, as a Christian. Um, I spent about four years in that realm uh, looking at all of the information that they were sharing and trying to put it together in relation to the UFO phenomenon. So I had an opportunity to look at this phenomenon from a perspective of an agnostic humanist. Then I had an opportunity to look at this phenomenon through the eyes of a new age metaphysical person, which is different from the eyes of a agnostic humanists, believe me. And then in 1996, involved, as we were involved in our research, um, I had the opportunity to be led to Jesus Christ. Um, and when I had that opportunity, I heard the gospel message in a way that I had never been shared before. And I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in November 1996. Well, I was at that point where I realized that this is not something I should be involved in, the UFO phenomenon, as a Christian. Um, 
it was telling me everything to get away from it. Um, but as that, um, I just was led deeper into trying to understand what this was all about. And I had to be able to take what I had now learned as a Christian back to the realm that I had come from, the New Age metaphysical realm, the agnostic humanist realm, because I was given answers in the research as a Christian that I had never been able to attain uh, in the other two perspectives. And certain UFO phenomena. So I've not had just the opportunity of looking at it from one perspective from the beginning, but I've had the opportunity to look at it from three different perspectives. So I didn't come into this as a Christian. I want people to know that. I was everything but. I mean, uh, if you talk to my old friends, you will know that I was far from uh, what most people would recognize as a Christian. And I have to tell you that uh, being able to look at this from another perspective uh, or any different perspective is something I think that's very important. I think there are people out there that belong to MUFON and, and independent researchers that come from different faith-based backgrounds uh, or different belief systems that causes them to look at something, uh, any phenomena, whatever it be, uh, from their certain perspective, one that I might have that you may not have or any of your other listeners or watchers in the program. Right. Um, all of us have something unique about us that causes us to see something in a little bit different light. And I think all of that needs to be brought to the table and when we're looking at trying to find an answer for what this phenomenon is about, the UFO phenomenon. And that's what I've been trying to do for all these years. The thing is, anything I found as an agnostic humanist was totally welcome to the realm, to the community be shared. Things that I found in the research looking at it from a new age that a physical perspective was always welcome to be shared into the UFO uh, community. But the hardest thing I have been able to do in the past 20 years is since I became a Christian is trying to be able to share the findings into the community itself because it's something that's so unique and so different and it's been very hard to be accepted and even to be allowed to be able to be laid on the table with the rest of the puzzle pieces. And, and that's been hard for me to work with, you know, all these years. But it's through shows like this that I have that opportunity that I can finally bring to the table the research findings that I have. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that brings up a really important question, too, because you you discovered something in your research with abductees, uh, especially from a Christian perspective that that you, you didn't have access to from the other two perspectives, how, how to actually stop alien abductions. And you would think that, you know, if, if MUFON was able to discover a way to uh, for, to teach people how they can stop alien abductions, that should be big news. You know, that should be widely accepted. Yet, what you discovered was so controversial that uh, it seems like a lot a lot of them wanted to back off from that. C can you tell us about that? Yes, and I think the reasoning for that is, is because uh, if you accept what I what I have found in the research as being real, um, then you have to accept that God is real. And you have to accept that God's word, the Bible, is real. A lot of people aren't ready to do that. Most of the UFO, paranormal, metaphysical, New Age community are not Christians. They're everything but. Um, their belief systems that are entirely the opposite of Christians. Yeah. It was quite a shock. They're going, well, there's other ways to stop it too, you know. And we actually had a, a, a researcher, writer, Ann Druffel, that wrote a book, uh, Stopping Alien Abductions, back in 2004, 2005. And she showed a number of different ways to stop. And one of the ways that she looked at higher power. 
area that we had found. So only there was only one higher power that we had found. We hadn't found any other name that worked. Uh, no other name that's been able to stop these experiences like what we found in our research. Not Mohammed. You, I, I, not I hate Christian, to interrupt. I hate Buddha. to interrupt you. I hate to interrupt. Can you repeat that last sentence again? For some reason, your audio and video is breaking up really bad. It was perfectly clear until you started talking about this part of the story, and there, there's probably a reason for that. Uh, but, but um, it, it, everybody in the chat, pray for the uh, pray, pray for the technology here that it's going to work out okay because everything was clear and fine. Until until that last thing, and it started breaking up. Would, would would you mind repeating the last couple of sentences? If I can remember where I was at. <laughs> um, you, you were saying that there was only one name that uh, these. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know we we know why this is happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, let me see if I can make sure we're clear here. What I came. With Across was the only way to stop these experiences, to truly stop them from happening, uh, was by invoking the name and authority of Jesus Christ. Nowhere in our research, in our questioning of other researchers, have we found this ability by using any other name, Mohan or Buddha. You know, or any other name that might be out there that people classify as a deity. Um, only the name and authority of Jesus Christ is the one that's been able to work. And when she shared that work in her book, Anne Druffel, um, we had to clarify, we had to backtrack just for a second. And one of my uh, partners in the alien resistance group, um, Dr. Chris Ward at the time, he pulled us aside and he says, this is very interesting that this book come out at this particular time in our research. Because here we're saying that people have been able to stop the abduction experience and there's only one way to stop it. Well, she's coming out and she's saying that there's different ways to stop it. That's confusing our work and confusing what we're finding. And I said, well, how do you think we need to deal with this? And he says, he says I feel that the warfare has been escalated. The enemy's on to what we're doing and what we found. And the enemy's trying to muddle the waters here, you know, with vocabulary. Because once we re-looked at what we had found, it's not only that people have been able to stop the experience. Because, yes, I've seen other ways that people have been able to stop them. But it's to be able to terminate the experience as a life pattern. That's where the important part came in. And that's where we found that only a relationship with Jesus Christ was. And to be able to stop it from ever happening again. So do you do you think uh, some of the hesitation that you uh, what, well what was what was your experience like when you tried to talk with other people at MUFON that you know you you found this way that people can get free of this thing um, and, and do you think what, what what do you think the reason for for their hesitation was? Well, in the beginning, this is a response I got from MUFON. Nothing. And then I, I, I accepted that better than, you know, some nasty remarks. But those nasty remarks did come out, but they weren't from MUFON uh, officials in the higher up. They were from MUFON members who were also um, state section directors, investigators like myself at the time. Um, the lower ranks that had other belief systems and were not at you know, we're not at the point where they would accept it only want to believe. And, you know, I had to tell them, I said, I didn't go looking for this information. We had originally put a trying to ask question in the beginning to see our research. Nobody, the question we put out there was a very simple question. Are Christians being abducted by aliens? And that was what we went after for our research. That that one question, we wanted an answer for that. And we came back with two answers, you know, yes and no. And that puzzled us because it should have been very simple. They're either they aren't or they are. But the reason for the two answers is because we found out that there were two types of Christians. There were the Christians that 
um, we termed them uh, talk to talk. Um, they, they made a profession of faith, you know, to Jesus Christ, but it never developed a relationship, a personal relationship with him. They were still dabbling in areas that, um, that they shouldn't have been. You know, the Bible tells us not to. They were still dealing in the occult or And because of that personal relationship, they've been able to get their life pattern in a way that they weren't dabbling in those areas. They were able to shut those doors and everything terminated from there on. So there was a major difference in the type of uh, Christian, the walk, the walk, or the talk, the talk. The only problem is so many people would prefer being talk to talk, you know, because they feel that to be a walk the walk, you have to be accountable for things that you do. And a lot of people don't want to do that. You know, they don't want to be accountable for bad things or things that are ungodly. They want to continue through their life the way and have fun, whatever, you know. You can still have fun and be a believer in Jesus Christ, but they're still tempted by the world. They're still following the world's temptations. They're still being seduced by the world. And when we say the world as a Christian, we know who's behind that, and, and that's the demonic forces themselves. The, to pull us away from that, as Christians, to pull us away from a personal relationship, because that authority comes with the personal relationship. And only with the personal relationship. That authority is not there if you're leaving the door. And that's something people need to be aware of. It's through a true relationship that that authority is able to, uh, to work for you. And that's a choice. That's a choice you have to make. This whole thing is about a choice. You chose to dabble in those areas, but you also have to choose to close those doors if you want it to stop. Yeah, definitely. And that's a really good point, too. Is It's not enough to say that, you know, well, I'm a Christian, so that should be enough. It's that personal relationship. That is the key. The personal relationship is what allows us as Christians uh, or, or really, you know, where Jesus allows us to exercise his authority over uh, the enemy. And, and that, that's that's a really great point, and I'm glad that you made it because I think that's a, a big thing that people miss. Um, you know, there are times where somebody can, if they're going through an alien abduction and they call out the name of Jesus, you, you know, he, he, he might help. Uh, but without that, without that personal relationship, it, you know, it, it's still kind of a crapshoot. But with, with the personal relationship, you can call out the, on the name of Jesus and it'll not only stop the experience, stop the abduction, but it'll it'll stop the pattern uh, uh, and, and break that curse in your entire life. And that that's phenomenal. And that is so important. Uh, now, an, another topic of this is... Um, you know the more the more governmental kind of conspiracy side of it, and th this made breaking news. The official uh, disclosure, uh, especially with what uh, Lou Elizondo came out with. Uh, what what do you have to offer on that? Because I know you got some special information that I don't think anybody else out, outside of maybe you and a couple other people really really know about. What what can you tell us? Wow, um, I had the opportunity this past year to make uh, two trips back to the states for talks. Um, I met my partner, Guy Malone, in Roswell for the um, July 4th UFO Festival in Roswell. We spoke there. And then I came back again for the MUFON Symposium, the International Symposium in Philadelphia. And I was... The bank was... I just talked what was going on with this. But as I listened to him, 
I hate During to cut I hate to cut you off talk. again, but there is there was about thirty seconds there where the where the audio and video just cut oh. out. The, the, I'm so sorry. Uh, please, people, keep praying. That that seemed to help last time. Uh, the last thing that we were able to hear is that uh, you you you, uh, you you were in Roswell. You got to speak with your your business partner, uh, Guy Malone, or ministry partner, whatever Guy Malone. And and then then there was a second a second trip to the states, and then that's when it started cutting out. <laughs> Yeah, the second trip to the States was the MUFON International Symposium in Philadelphia. Okay. And we had a, we had a keynote speaker there, and that was Lou Elizondo. And uh, Friday night he spoke. And as he got into his talk, and the talk is actually up on YouTube where you can see it, he discusses in the talk the findings that the government made in the research that he was leading. And when I listened to his description of what they found, it was like a hammer just laid on my head. In that instance, I thought, he's describing something we already know about. What he's describing, if you listen carefully, what they have said they have found is a signature for a UFO event, a true incoming unidentified and this i have to be careful here so you understand what i'm talking about 98 percent of ufo reports are misidentified natural phenomenon or man-made phenomenon it's that two percent that acts very strangely that we're looking at as being something from outside of earth right that's the ones that we're looking at um this is what they're talking in their research is these particular events where it's seen normal nature to it they have found that when the event happens they've been able to record the signature of the event okay mm -hmm. in other words it leaves an imprint wow the the actual ufo event leaves an imprint and that imprint is a time space distortion okay okay that they've been able to when this happens because of this they've been able to find from the event they're trying to recreate it to be able to use that type of technology for whatever it means unlimited power unlimited space travel whatever they're trying to understand how that happens okay with these things coming in when he described that signature as a time space distortion it hit me really really hard yeah and i knew exactly what he was describing and this goes back to the mid 90s when jenny randall an Eng uh, british researcher she found something that in the interviews with people that had had UFO experiences, there were people that were describing an event during the experience that was unusual to other events. And she didn't know what to, cause that, to call that. So the term she came up with was the Oz factor. Oh, okay. okay? And if you look that up, the reason she called it that is because during a UFO sighting event that certain people had had, it's like when you talk to them and you ask them, what was it like while this was happening? It's like time stood still, everything moved, quit moving or, or moved slow. There was no sound. It was like you were put inside of a bubble of a time space distortion. That's wow. what she was describing. I've had the opportunity to talk to witnesses to UFO events where they said exactly those same things. So I myself have interviewed people that have experienced that, where they all of a sudden went from noise everywhere, traffic noise, everything, to where all of a sudden they're in an envelope. And this is during the sighting event because this is an effect of the sighting. 
what they're describing here, what I believe the Lord laid on my heart to understand is what the government has found and is able to describe but not able to put the right words to it is a manifestation event. Wow. We know from the research that I found that these experiences, being able to be stopped by the name and authority of Jesus Christ, even a UFO experience, not just abduction, because I got records of people stopping events while they're happening, okay, making them totally disappear while they're happening. If that is showing what we believe it is, that these entities are demonic in nature, okay, that the effects that they leave and the abilities that they seem to show mirrors what the Bible calls angelic beings, then what the government is describing here, okay, is an angelic manifestation into the third dimension from the spiritual dimension. It leaves an effect. This is huge. Yeah. Because that's disclosure. To a Christian, that's disclosure. It may not be enough to convince the rest of the people in the UFO community because they're not Christian. Some may be. But the ones that aren't, they're looking for ET, okay? Their disclosure is going to be ET. But as a Christian, we need to understand that they just <laughs> they just gave us disclosure of angels manifesting into our realm, which we already know happens by God's word. It's happened throughout history. They just confirmed it for us. And they've confirmed it that it is an ET. It's something we've known about all along. We've been given disclosure as believers. This is huge, and it needs to be listened to to the UF, to the uh, Christian community, because you may not believe in all this stuff as as a normal Christian out there. You may think this is all hokey stuff, um, and it's all you know a bunch of crazed people with these things that they're seeing. But you need to understand, it's not. This is really happening. It's not extraterrestrial. It's actually proving that your belief in God is absolutely real. It's believing that it's showing you evidence. We've been given disclosure that God is real, the Bibles are real, that angels are real, that spirits are real. Everything that Michael Heiser's been talking about in the unseen realm, we've just been given disclosure that it's real. And they're missing it completely because they're expecting disclosure to be something else. When I started thinking about this, it, it just started growing in my mind. I'm thinking, oh, this is insane. What's happened here? They're all pointing at the Brookings Report from years ago when the Brookings Report got together and was shared saying that if it was ever let loose that we are not alone, we are being visited by other entities from other planets, um, that's going to turn the world upside down. It's going right. to turn society upside down, mainly because of people who believe in God, mm -hmm. because it would go against everything what these people believe. Guess what? It's just the opposite. It's going to turn the non-believers upside down. And this is an opportunity for every Christian right now to be able to take this information and use it to turn against the the biggest deception in humanity we're dealing with right now is the UFO abduction phenomenon. The biggest deception, the biggest delusion upon humanity right now is this phenomenon. It's everywhere. It's everywhere in society. Whether you believe it to be real or not, that's not the point. The thing is, you have to understand it's happening to more than half the people in the world. If you look at the if you look at the the, the the polls that have been taken, more people believe we're being visited by extraterrestrials than believe in God. That's today's that's today's polls. But they're believing in a delusion. They're believing in something that the whole purpose, and Michael Heiser stated it too, that the whole purpose is to take our eyes away from the one true God. And that's what's happening. And we've just be we've just been given disclosure by the government 
to show us that what we have is real. We need to take that information and put it in a format that we can share with the secular realm and get them to understand that what they're experiencing is not what they think it is. And we just have to be able to take that and put it in the right vocabulary. They're calling it a time-space distortion when we know it as a manifestation, okay? All we got to do is get them to understand we're just speaking in a different language is all it is. But it's exactly the same thing. And when they understand that we have an ability over these entities and over their what they're doing by the, using the name and authority of Jesus Christ, that's phenomenal because we can turn this phenomenon completely around. These, I asked the question, when you watch the video on YouTube from that symposium, yeah. I got up at the end because I wanted to ask him this question. And I asked him, I said, should we be in fear of this? You know, they are. Because they have no idea how to deal with this type of technology. You know what? It's not technology. It's ability. It's the ability of these entities. It's not a technology of some type of, of creature. No, it's not that. There is a te it, it looks like a technology because it affects natural physics, okay? But this natural physics is being affected all the time. They're actually working on uh, doing the same thing with the CERN Collider. They're right. actually trying to create that time-space distortion in a laboratory. It's the same thing. So it's not outside of our natural physics that God created. It's something that happens all the time. And he talks about this. Uh, Louis talks about how you know we're, we're dealing with it every day. Uh, when you talk about GPSs on your vehicles to get around, you know the satellites are way up there outside the planet, and here we're on the planet. Well, there's a time-space distortion just between the link between the satellites and our GPSs. That right. atomic clock has to reset the satellites all the time because of that time-space distortion. So it's not something that's unusual. It's just something that a spiritual entity causes that effect in time-space in a local point when they manifest into our realm. And we're seeing evidence of it. The government has tracked evidence of it. So we got disclosure. It's already happened. We just have to get the terminology right on what was disclosed as christians we know what it is all we got to do is the church has an opportunity right now to witness to the entire planet of exactly what we found and that god is real and you proved it yourself Wow, that is, that is amazing! I, you you just you have blown my mind. I mean, uh, that that's phenomenal. This uh, this completely escaped me before tonight. I, I hadn't heard uh, about about this from this perspective, but it completely makes sense. It tracks along with a lot of the research I've uh, I've been doing over the past few years as well. Um, I know I know a lot of people are going to have uh, questions, so uh, people get your get your questions ready. We're going to move into the Q and A, but uh, while they're getting their questions in the chat. What is the best way for people watching at home to get started now? What what should they do with this information? What is the best way uh, uh, for 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 them to get this out? And then also on the tail end of that, how can people find out more about you and your work uh, online? Well, the uh, web page we have for CE4 is ce4research.com, and if you want to follow us on Facebook. Uh, I'd stay a little more live on Facebook. We have a Facebook page called CE4 Research. Um, also, there's a MUFON page that we, we uh, that I'm working with called MUFON Global. And uh, it's got about 30, 32, 33,000 members right now. It's one that I'm working with on a regular basis. Uh, we tried to get an actual Facebook page that's supported by MUFON headquarters. And uh, we were able to do that. So there's a lot of people that you can talk to and try and share this information with in, in, a, in, a, in a group that's very well founded uh, on doing actual research. on global page for that. Um, but it, specifically on the CE4 research side, uh, you want to talk to me or the more focused on the research that we do, it's the CE4 research Facebook page. Uh, the testimonies. Um, I try to post the testimonies as much as I can on the web page. Uh, 
in the new ones come in, I tend to use Facebook a little more. So the evidence of being able to stop these experiences is in the testimonies themselves of people who have been able to have a life change of terminating this experience through a personal relationship in Jesus Christ. That's the number one most powerful evidence in the world today that shows who these entities are behind this phenomenon, that they can be stopped through that name. Okay? That's those personal testimonies. That's what CE4 research has found. Now, let's take that. Look at the work that Louis uh, uh, Elizondo is talking about. Look at his talks. He describes this, this signature that they're finding. Understand what he's talking about so you can share this with others. And take this and tie it in together. Look at scripture when it talks about dealing with angels. But anytime you've got angels that are appearing, look at the effects that, that happen with them. Understand what God's doing with this. And give them the be, be able to share the simple gospel message and, and the understanding of what the God, what God's what he wants from us. And I have to bring that up because I downloaded uh Mike Heiser's book, What Does God Want? Oh, and I yeah. tell you, that is very powerful, very simple. And if you and I, I suggest everybody get that um, and read that because it gives you an ability to simply share what God is all about and what He wants from us. I think that is uh, one of the best um, avenues I've seen for being able to witness with people. But Remember, everybody around us right now, more than half the world is involved in this UFO phenomenon in some manner. Some manner of focus, some manner of belief, some manner of, of being uh, hit with advertisements that use UFO stuff. I mean, it's everywhere. Okay, it's, You have an opportunity right now to use that to your advantage, to be able to share with people, hey, these are only the lesser gods. There's a bigger God behind all of this, okay? And these lesser gods aren't looking out for you. You may think you're having good experiences with these entities, but believe me, they will turn in the end. They would, they are deceiving you. You can't even get an, in, an answer of where they come from, you know? Most people that say, yes, I'm having, you know, spiritual encounters with these entities, they don't even know where they're from. They can't even tell you where they're from. You challenge them with the name and authority of Jesus Christ, you'll know where they come from because they have to bow to that name every time. Yeah, amen. Absolutely. And it's the same with demonic attacks. It's the same same with anything from the enemy. And that's how we know that they're 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 all from they're all from the same evil source. Uh anybody, if you have a question for Joe Jordan, go ahead and put it in the chat now. Now is the time we are officially uh into uh, viewer questions and answers. So you can ask Joe or myself anything that you like. Uh, this this would be the time to do it. Put it in the chat. I am uh, keeping an eye on it. I do want to give a special thank you to Vic Shannon for a super chat donation of $9.99. He's saying, hi, Josh. Nice suit. Thank you, Vic. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, yes, thank all of you for, for joining us. And uh, if you want a super chat, you can, but I'm keeping an eye on the chat looking for any questions at all. Um, and, uh, so you don't have to super chat to get your, get your question answered. That's the point there. So if you have a question, feel free to put it in a lot of people, Joe, you, you've, I think you've blown everybody's minds. Like a lot of people, uh, they're, they're, they're agreeing with you. They're saying, you know, this is, this is all amazing and mind blowing stuff. And, uh, you know, it's time, it's time to get busy and it's, it's time for, you know, us as Christians to go out and, and really spread the gospel to the world because, you know, th this has been, this has been something that by and large, Christians haven't really had an answer for, you know, what to do about the alien abduction phenomena or uh, the UFO phenomena, especially, especially when they, if, if they leave behind these, these signatures like this, you know, how, how could we ever compete with that? Uh, what, what types of answers could we ever give? But um, th this, this is it. I mean, like you said, a, a official disclosure for Christians has happened. Uh, we, we have the answer. They're, they're not aliens. They're not, you know, uh, spaceships from another planet. Uh, they are, they are, uh, they're, they're, they're demonic. Yeah. They're, they're fallen angelic entities. It's a manifestation. Yes. I, I like, I like how you said that it's a manifestation event. It's not, 
uh, you, you know, it, it's not a UFO like experience or, or something. It's a manifestation event. And that's, that's what happens when they breach our realm. Um, let's see if this is a question. Uh, that is a statement, but thank you for the statement. Um, we have one you question. Know, oh, yeah, go, go ahead. There's a, there's another event and there was a gal there that was, that spoke at the symposium that described the actual event happening. She was part of it. It's the aerial school event in Africa that happened in the 1990s. Look that up because they're getting ready to do a film on that, a documentary film they're trying to produce right now. She was one of the school children. She was at the symposium, and she describes her experience. And when you listen to her describe the experience of seeing these entities and, and, and being involved with them right there on that playground at that school, she's describing exactly that same event. She's describing that Oz factor. And I had to ask the question later in the conference when um, Travis Walton spoke. Because when I've talked, you know, I've talked with him and I've listened to his story over and over and over, but I couldn't put enough to where I believe it was what had happened was a true event in the, in the aspect of it was something more than just something that happened in the mind. Right. And I had to ask him that question. And when I got up there after his talk, I had an opportunity to ask that question. I said, Travis, I need to take you back to the moment that you guys were seeing the light in the trees and you stopped the vehicle and you got out. Stop right there. Stop right there. Think for a moment. Tell me what you heard. Were there any sounds? Was the wind blowing? Anything. And there should have been. There should have been cicadas going. There should have been birds. There should have been wind rustling in the trees. Absolutely silent. Mm. Boom. That right there confirmed me that without a doubt, Travis had been involved in a true experience. Okay? He was right there in that bubble. What happened after that? I don't know. But at that moment, he was involved in that time-space distortion. Wow. Yeah, and and that you you hear that uh, from from some abductees that that you know s sound seems to stop, and I've never thought about that before, but that's absolutely true. You know, I I I've, I've researched quantum physics and stuff, and I understand you know what little we humans can you know about time and stuff. But if you're if you're in if you're in an environment where time is is slowing down like that. Uh, sound itself, it would get to the point where you can't hear it anymore. That's absolutely correct. Uh, we got a we got a question. Actually, we got quite a few here. But uh, so, Get Silent Night is asking: um, Some flying crafts we reverse engineered. Some are demons. Do you feel there is a third possibility? Uh, so, I think just generally about the flying crafts themselves. Do they all fall into one camp, or are they kind of separate? Um, are, are some material and some immaterial? How, how do you how do you parse all that out? If it's material, it's man-made. Right. Okay? If it's immaterial, which is very hard to discern, and I just came across a, a testimony that was just sent to me where they were talking about having visual sightings. And when they see the actual craft, it looked to be metallic. Well, during one of the sightings that they had, they were actually able to get their hands on a set of high-powered binoculars. And when they were able to take the binoculars and zoom in on the craft that appeared to be metallic, solid metallic. As it zoomed in, it became transparent. Oh, so what okay. we're seeing here in these manifestations aren't a manifestation of every nuts and bolts of the craft. It's into the delusion of us seeing the craft. These entities, and, and Dr. David Allen Lewis talked about this in his book, UFO and Time Delusion which was written back in the 70s, okay? In the, he's got a chapter in there called Flatland, and he tries to describe what the effect is from a, an entity that's spiritual coming in and leaving an imprint on a two-dimensional realm, three-dimension yeah. to two Yeah, I've, I've written about that too. And that's yes. the same thing we're dealing with, but we're dealing with four-dimension to three-dimension. Mm -hmm. And what does that seem like? How, how would we describe that? And that's what we're having trouble with, is describing what we're seeing, because it's not third-dimensional, okay? It's, it's a bubble that's coming into our 
realm, but not actually our realm. They're inside of this this distortion. Okay, they can these entities can manifest physical physical atoms, molecules, whatever to appear, make things appear of what they need. But they're not creating. They don't create. Only God creates. But these can manipulate. Okay. Keep in mind. When God's angels came, were they wearing clothes? God, you know, of course, he probably made the clothes. But these other angels, fallen angels, when they come, they've got to be able to appear and appear in a way that we're not frightened if they're out to try and deceive us in any way. Otherwise, we're just going to run off from them. But they've got to be able to manipulate what's available for their purpose and during a manifestation. And that's what's happening. They're manipulating matter to look like what we need to see. Remember, it's all delusion. It's all about making us believe a lie. Okay, Whatever it takes for us to believe the lie, that's what this phenomenon is about. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, Truth 101 is asking a uh, question. Are, are the aliens uh, hybrids or Nephilim? What, what are the, the supposed aliens themselves? What do, you, what, what, uh, what do you think, Joe? I mean, you got to go back to Scripture. And Scripture tells us who we war against. It didn't tell us we're warring against anybody but Ephesians 6, 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Absolute final, right there. There's no physical entities that we're, we're warring against. Who we do war against, which are principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly realm. Okay, we're dealing against a spiritual entity that can manifest and give the appearance of a physical entity when needed. But this whole concept, and, and I know I'm going to make people angry on this one, but I got to stand my ground on it because I dealt with this realm. For many, many years, I used to be part of the whole Nephilim belief part. But when I came to understand where that was coming from, I had to say, no, nope, I, I can't stand by that. I don't believe there's any physical aspect to the abduction experience. They leave physical marks. They leave things that appear to have been done by physical beings. But it's all part of make us believe what we need to be, need to believe. They want us to believe. The whole idea of hybrids came from looking at the research of um, Dr. David Jacobs, secular researcher into abductions. He did hypnotic regressions on many people that talked about a hybridization program that was happening during the experiences. Babies were being created. People were seeing it. The whole works. Okay, keep in mind, all of these were taken from testimony of people who came to him because, oh, I've had these dreams uh, and they're just like those movies I saw on alien abduction. I might be an abductee. I need to go talk to somebody. So you go talk to your doctor, right? Uh-uh. He's going to put you away or put you on some meds. So you're not going to go see your doctor and tell him these things. Amazing that nobody does that, right? So right. they go and search out a person who's going to listen to them and believe them. So they listen carefully. These people have already convinced themselves that they're abductees. They want to go talk to somebody that's going to confirm it for them. And that's what happens. If you look how hypnosis works, and I look at these, look at the hypnotherapist like Jacobs, I've looked at his you know, research. I don't see him. The people have already led themselves by coming to him in the first place. They've already put the suggestion in their heads that they're experiencers. And they're going to give this guy everything that he needs to hear so that he can turn around and say, yes, you're an abductor. So I believe the whole thing is very similar to the way hypnosis works. It's all about suggestion. Suggestion is coming at us from everywhere in society. TV, Hollywood, books, magazines, everything is coming at us about UFOs. Okay, you have a dream and you go see Whitley Strieber in his talk, he's going to convince you right away you're a believer. Just because you got a mark on your body, you can't remember where you got it from. Right. All of this is through suggestion. So all of the research on hybrids, all of the information on hybrids has come from what I call 
flawed secular research into abductions because there's no evidence for it except for testimony under hypnotic who have already put it in their minds that they're abductees. Okay? All of that was taken and used in a in the beginning in the beginning, back in 97, when Chuck Metzler wrote his book, and he made the similarity between as in the days of Noah from Genesis 6 and as in the days of today with Dr. David Jacobs. You put the two together, it looks awful similar. But the thing is, the abductions are based on flawed secular research. The idea of hybrids are based on flawed secular research. So do I believe that the Nephilim could be accounted for as being here today? No, because I think it's all flawed in the way the research was done. That connection is not a good connection. Okay, 25 years of research and abductions. I don't see the evidence of a physical experience. Nobody actually being taken anywhere. It's so much like a hypnotic trance uh, and a hypnotic experience. The actual event itself is mind-blowing. And... I've been studying hypnosis and the way it works. And if you look at hypnosis and, and research it and look at what they call the induction, which pulls the person into the experience, you watch street hypnosis and the way they work, first thing they do is grab the person's hand and do this, the guy goes right out. That's an induction. Another one is taking it and jerking their hand. That shakes your mind. It, it, it confuses you. And it instantly puts you in that ability to be, you know, worked with, okay? You know, the same thing happens to us in our sleep. People talk about, um, what they call that? Sleep paralysis. Oh, yeah. Where that happens. Most of us can remember at some point when we were sleeping where you instantly wake up because you had this feeling you were falling, okay? Well, the mind has a, a, a fix for that. A mind has a fix where you're not going to fall out of bed and hurt yourself. It lets you catch yourself. That is the same as an induction in hypnosis. So that's happening while we're sleeping. So at that moment that the body gets that jolt, that induction experience, by the body naturally catching itself, that's an opportunity for your mind to go in and give you any story it wants to. Or these entities to be able to give any story they want to give you. And that's what I'm seeing this abduction experience could be like. It's like you're being put into a play, okay? The question is, who's the playwright? And the playwright, I believe, are these demonic entities. But when you're in a play, picture a play in school where you had to be part of. They make the setting to where it's recognizable that like you're in a living room or you're in a dining room sitting at a table but you know what in in reality if you were actually home in your living room or in that dining room there would be more things there than what was in the play because the play only uses to give you familiarity okay mm -hmm. this is what i see in the hip in the abduction experience because i started questioning people about their experience if I questioned you about your birthday, your last birthday, I could ask you enough questions that you would actually experience, you could remember every one of your senses during that event. Right. Okay. You probably, if I if I just asked you right away, you wouldn't remember them all. But I know how to ask you the right questions to get you to remember every one of your senses because they were all active and they're all recorded. But when I went back and started talking talking to the abductees again about their experiences more in depth, I found that maybe only two of the senses were recorded. Only enough to make it sensational, only enough to make it memorable, and make it shocking. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's telling me that wasn't a real experience. Because in a real life experience, all of the senses are recorded. And I'm not seeing that in an experience. Two, three, maybe. But there's always something missing. That's a play. That's not reality. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and I, I do want to address, too, um, th this is never a show where I necessarily, uh, especially on uh, especially on something like this, where, where you know, there's, 
there, there's so much mystery surrounding it. You know, I mean, we're talking about higher dimensional realities here where we can't even hope to, uh, you know, imagine it or, or, or I, to, to me, to me, I, I say all options are on the table. So, you know, just a couple people in the chat, no one's being rude, by the way, everybody's being really respectful and nice, but you know, they're, they're, they're asking, well, you know, if he, if, uh, if Joe Jordan is, is, in conflict with a lot of the mainstream, you know, field of research in this fringe Christianity stuff, then why have them on at all? And I say, because we need to hear out all possibilities because maybe he, because Joe has been uh, researching this for uh, probably longer than I've been alive. I mean, he's been researching it for years and years. He's interviewed uh, many, many, many people uh, and he's come to conclusions and he's he's able to explain it in a way that makes sense. Uh, where where somebody like me or somebody like you in the audience you can follow along, uh, wa you know, his, his uh, uh, you can track along with how he reached his conclusions and it makes sense. So, of course, with something like this, with the UFO phenomenon, I want to I want to hear out all possibilities, you know. And uh, I think that in many ways, we as Christians can benefit from that type of thing with a lot of stuff. You know, a lot of times we we as Christians kind of I'm sort of getting on my soapbox here for a minute, but uh, we, we, we tend to fall in these extremes, you know, all, all the time. You know, we have like one rapture view and we're, we're not even willing to entertain any others. We have one 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 view on any point of prophecy or any non-salvational issue and then we don't want to look at any others ever we just want to assume that if somebody comes to the table with a conflicting view then they're wrong and there must be something wrong with them and i i i just don't think that way anymore i used to years and years ago but it's a miserable way to live i want to hear all possibilities as long as there's some evidence and some reason to to believe it and and that that's why I love talking with you, Joe. Because I mean, yeah, you 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 definitely do have a different view than most of the people that I I work with. But I love it. I, I love that you have that different view, and I welcome it. Um, and uh, I, I'm I'm totally on 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 board. Now, me myself, where I personally stand on how to interpret this stuff. I don't know. You know. I'm still I'm still searching myself. I've written several books on it, uh, and I, I I talk to people who have uh, differing opinions on it to see you know what evidence they've been able to gather and why they believe what they believe. You're I'll, I'll tell you what though. You're one of the few who has actually gone out in the field himself and has collected his own evidence and not just you know researched a bunch of different people and kind of pieced it together on their own. You're you're one of the actual few uh, field researchers. So that that's why I value. I definitely value your opinion. It makes sense. Uh, and and I totally see it. Uh, so I just wanted to address that real quick for for anybody who had any questions. It's it's because there this is just such a mysterious topic. It's not something that we as Christians should be fighting about if we have a different view. I mean that is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous thing to fight about. Listen to what Joe said earlier. Disclosure has happened for us Christians. Even if you are a a, a nephilim hybrid nuts and bolts UFO kind of guy, that's fine. UFO the the disclosure has happened for you too. We still understand it as a fallen angel, as 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 a uh, a demonic type of manifestation, uh, and not aliens from another planet. So let's focus on the stuff that we can agree on, because if we can unite together in this, we can really show the world what's going on and help a lot of people. And I think that is so much more important than you know what what aisle on what interpretation somebody falls on. Uh, so I love that you're willing to share that, Joe, and I love that you're willing to stick with it too, because I I know that you've gotten a lot of flack, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I, and I, I hate that for you. I, I hate that that's happened to you. But I know you've gotten a lot of flack uh, about your your views on this. And you know, I, I would just say it, I, I like the conversation. I, I like I like us as Christians learning to um, l learning to deal with one another when we have a differing view and and not. And still, still love each other over, you know, still love each other through it, not hate each other over. It. So I, 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 I'll get off my soapbox. I just wanted to uh, address that. Um, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Now, you know, and that's something I, I said right in the beginning. I said that, you know, we have so many of all of this, different perspectives. But have to come to the table. If you don't bring every single piece of the puzzle to the table, you have a flawed picture of what you are looking for. Amen. You will never get a complete picture. So it, to me... It doesn't bother me that, you know, people come against what I have been trying to share. I only share what I found. I didn't ask for this in the first place. You know, I didn't ask that I end up having testimonies to show what this evidence is. I asked one question, and I, I ended up with all of this in my lap because of it, you know. Um, 
I didn't come at this as a Christian looking for this, looking to prove Christianity. That wasn't my purpose in the beginning. It just happens to be that that's what happened. You know, everything I have found in the research points to God is real, God's word is real, and the name and authority of that God, Jesus Christ, is real. The scripture even tells us that. The name above all names, the name above the earth, below the earth, and on the earth. You know, it's real. When they say that, it's real. You know, and, and the, the thing is, the evidence of these testimonies, they prove that, you know, not just that we're dealing with a demonic entity, but they prove what scripture says on how we deal with these entities. And that's the one thing I need to share with you here. Your listeners need to go away knowing that if they choose to understand this and they choose to accept it, they need to know how this works. They need to know that if they encounter these entities in any format, any type of paranormal activity, that they know how to deal with it. And scripture gives us that. If, remember I quoted Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12 tells us who we war against, and that's these spiritual entities, these spiritual demonic entities. Chapter 13 through 17 tells us how to protect ourselves, okay? Protect means defense. It means defense. You put on the armor of God, all the different aspects of the armor of God, to protect yourself from the wiles of the enemy in your daily life. But I tell you what, we as humans are weak. We as humans break down. We as humans become weak in our stature and our protection. We let down a piece of the armor every now and then. We cannot stand in that every day. You know, uh, Paul made the comment, See, the prayer without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Constantly be praying, you know. So when I found the, the evidence that we were able to stop this experience, I questioned God. I said, God, show me where this, where this um, uh, proactive stance is. Right. Show me where the ability is. It's not just defense, but show me where this offensive move is. Show me in Scripture so I can say, God already said this. And it was only two verses later in verse 19. That says that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. That is your offensive move. That is the evidence of the offensive move in scripture. That is the evidence that these testimonies are, are real. That is, the te that is the evidence that shows you that this actually can be stopped. Okay. What does that scripture mean? That I may open my mouth boldly. That means you must speak. These entities cannot read your mind in any way. And God gives us that in different scriptures. He talks about if you want to talk to God, you go in your prayer closet. That means you don't speak out loud. You talk here to God. Talk here to God. Okay? Why? Because the entity can only hear you. They can't read your mind. Right. If you don't pray out loud, you only pray silently to God, only God hears you. You want the enemy to hear what you're praying for? Speak out loud. No problem. So he's showing you right there, and there's evidence in the book of Mark where every time Jesus cast out a demoniac, he didn't just go, and the demoniac was gone. No, he spoke the demoniacs out, okay, because they can't read your mind. They can't. They could not read our minds. We have to speak. So when you speak to the enemy, you must speak out loud. You must tell him, and what do you tell him, okay? That I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, okay? For which I am an ambassador in chains. That ambassador in chains, that means I'm a child of God. That means I have a personal relationship. What's the mystery that they're talking about revealing? That mystery, there were many mysteries that were revealed. But that particular mystery, and Mike Kaiser talks about the enemy thought that by having Christ crucified, he walked the earth. That would be the end of the trouble. He'd be out of this air. Okay? There's a mystery there. That mystery was information withheld until a later time. What Satan did not know was that on the day of Pentecost, when they were in the upper room, when the 
Holy Spirit came down and flamed tongues of fire. That from that day on, every believer would have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The enemy did not know that that would happen. He thought that when Christ was gone and left the earth, that, that was the end of him. He had no idea. That was the mystery that was kept from the enemy until it was revealed on the day of Pentecost. Every believer, relationship with Jesus Christ, would have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. When you have that, okay, you also have the authority over everything above the earth, below the earth, under the earth, on the earth, through the name and authority of Jesus Christ. That's where we get the authority through that mystery revealed, and that is our proactive stance. That is our offensive move by claiming that authority as a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He did it in Mark with every demoniac. My testimonies that I gained over the years show that it still does it today, dealing with these spiritual entities that are affecting us in this phenomenon. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. That, that Truer words have never been spoken, you know, especially when it comes to something like this. Uh, I do want to make one quick comment. Tiffany G, you were not being offensive at all when you asked uh, the question that spurred on my soapbox rant. <laughs> no, you actually, yeah, it was a very good question. I'm glad that you asked it. Um, and uh, if, if I seemed frustrated at all, it wasn't towards anybody in the chat. As far as I can see, everybody's been respectful. Uh, and if anybody isn't, I have a couple of great moderators in here who, who, who get rid of them immediately. But but you're right. This has always been a, a for Josh Peck disclosure. Everything we do on this channel has been an open forum for uh, respectful, good conversation, regardless if uh, people have a different viewpoint. So I appreciate the question. It was a good question. I was glad to uh, address it. Um, well, I mean, you're, you have already stayed uh, past what what we uh, agreed on. There are a couple more questions, but I, I know I, I don't want to make you stay any later than what you already agreed on. So it's it's totally up to you. Uh, we could wrap up now. I'm or good. You want to take a couple more? I, I'd rather answer their questions and have that opportunity now for them to give answers that they need. Okay, great. Great. Uh, well, there's there's there'll probably there'll probably be a couple more that come in but the uh, one that that this is several people that have been asking this um they've heard they've heard of a connection between uh ufo sightings and bigfoot sightings is there a relationship between bigfoot and ufo and can we can we look at bigfoot in a a, a from a christian perspective the same way that we could on a you know with the ufo phenomenon what what are your thoughts about that oh wow um <laughs> I believe there is a correlation between Bigfoot and sightings. Okay, we've seen that for many, many, many years. Um, that's something that's not, I'm not gonna deny that at all, and the research community won't deny that either. There's definitely been a correlation between UFO sightings and Bigfoot. Um, the thing about what is Bigfoot? From what I'm understanding here, and, and you're gonna be kind of shocked on this one, I hate I hate to say it, but your 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 audio is is it got real quiet and then it's super distorted. It it almost sounds like uh it, like the the plug isn't plugged in all the way or something. Did did something change uh, on your end with your microphone? No, I'm I'm working wireless on my mic. It, it, is I'm it good. maybe the battery? Is the battery dying? I don't think so, but we'll give it a try. You still okay? No, it, it's like it's like it's real quiet and then it's it's like super distorted at the same time. Not sure. That's probably more connection. Oh, okay. Uh, well, let me ask people in the chat. Are, are you hearing the same thing I am? Uh, it, do, are you able to at least make out what Joe is saying? I, I, I can make out what you're saying. Uh, it's just it's just quiet. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you guys think in the chat? Uh, okay, people are saying that they can hear you fine. So it might just be something on my end. Uh, it could it could even be that. Okay, so sorry to interrupt. Everybody saying they hear you fine. It must be something on my end. Uh, so so uh, continue with what you're saying. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Back to looking at Bigfoot. Um, I think a lot of people are seeing something that is like in the UFO realm. You know, I told you that 98% of UFO sightings are either man-made or you know natural phenomenon misidentified. I think we're seeing the same type of statistics with 
uh, Bigfoot sightings. I think people have gotten caught up in the idea of Bigfoot and are seeing Bigfoot when it's really not Bigfoot. That does happen. We do know that. Uh, once, one thing I do want to share, though, with Bigfoot sightings is I've come across um, interviews that I've had with people that have had the Bigfoot sighting, and lo and behold, when you ask the right questions, what I found was they also have the Oz factor involved during a Bigfoot sighting. Okay? So what is that telling you? Are we still dealing with this manifestation? And is it just part of the great grand delusion? Okay, remember, this whole delusion that we're dealing with, and if you look at it scripture, it's called the end time delusion. You know, that God would send a delusion that, if possible, even the very elect would believe the lie. Right. Okay, so this delusion has to be that powerful. It has to be that good. And I believe that this delusion is that powerful. That's why we're seeing so many facets of it, um, to get us to take our eyes off of God. And I tell you, when you start looking at all of these crazy things, it all comes back to the same entity connection, though, behind it. And that's what we need to be looking at. I think what we're dealing with with Bigfoot in the real instances is another of these manifestation events. I think people are having that. Um, what's interesting is that uh, there's a gal that I just recently talked to in Australia who's just come out of the uh, New Age metaphysical realm and become a believer. And she used to, believe it or not, channel messages from Bigfoot. Just oh, wrap wow. your mind around that one for a bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're talking about a... Uh, a, a giant ape-like creature that has the ability to telepathically communicate, you know, so that ought to give you a red flag right there that we're dealing with something more spiritual than probably uh, physical. Yeah, I would I would think so, and it, it, it's strange that that you know a lot of the people who are are into the uh, you know the more the more esoteric side of Bigfoot don't make that connection necessarily. Um, Kristen Dokin is asking uh, along these lines: uh, Is uh, is this is this similar to the black eyed children phenomenon? Are we kind of looking at different aspects of the same sort of thing? No, that the black eyed children phenomenon. You know, I looked at that probably twenty years ago when they first started looking at that stuff, and uh, the New Age metaphysical realm was trying to come up with this idea that, you know, mankind was evolving, you know, into uh, a, a new type of humanity. And that's where that all started from. And they were trying to recognize uh, a group of people that that was happening to. And that's where the black eyed children came out of. Um, these were, these were children that were pretty much savants, I guess you would say. In some aspect, they all had some some different talents or, or intelligence areas that they would specialize in, uh, were very high in. But it, it was really nothing nothing as far as being hybridizations or anything like that. Uh, these were natural children that had natural abilities that, you know, there are special kids out there everywhere. It's just when you try to put them all together, and they end up having some dark eyes. I tell you, there's um, there's some Asian you know cultures over here that are actually dark eye. All of them. You know, does that mean they're part of that too? I mean, we see in America, we see brown, blue, green, hazel, everything types of eyes. You know, um, but you come over to an Asian culture like Filipino, uh, you don't see that. They're all absolute dark eye. You know, that's something strange for us to see. But we also see that in our culture too, you know, here and there. Uh, no, I think that was just another part of the deception that the New Age was using. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, I haven't heard that that take on it, and uh, I've never known what to do with it either. I've I've heard several different, uh, you know, mo mostly anecdotal sto stories about it and and stuff. But uh, yeah, that that's that's interesting. I I haven't heard that before. Um, you know, I got you. I got one for you. I want to share. In my yeah, research. yeah. You know what? When I came over here to Korea, you know, I, I wanted to know what was going on UFO-wise, abduction-wise, when I first got here. I'm, I'm here now on my seventh year, and uh, I wanted to get back into doing the research, but you know, 
being over here, I needed to get involved here because it was too far to go back and forth to the States, too expensive. So as I started looking into it, I wasn't finding anything. I, that, that puzzled me. And because all the leading researchers, if you listen to them, say that this is a worldwide phenomenon, you know, and you automatically think if it's a worldwide phenomenon, it must be having the same effect on the culture as it does in the U.S. Right. But that's not true. You know that the immediate response I get when I ask about UFOs or abductions here in Korea is, I don't have time for that. And, and off they go. <laughs> you know? And uh, I kept getting that same answer over and over and over. And I got... I finally asked one of my Korean friends that I work with, what do, you, what do they mean by that? We've all read about that stuff. and We've seen shows on it. But uh, you're correct. We don't have time for that. And <laughs> what they're saying is, and you have and this is something I need you, everybody to understand, is this culture is not like America. This culture here, the kids, I mean, they're 60 years, 65 years out of total devastation from the Korean War. And they are right now one of the leading technological countries in the world. I mean, these guys have already gone 5G, you know, on, on, on Internet. You know, they opened that up during the, the Winter Olympics earlier in the year. Uh, technology here is absolutely phenomenal. Um, way ahead of what the U.S. has right now. Uh, you guys are going to be playing catch-up for a long time, if you ever can. Um, the, the, the kids here, they go to school 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Wow. If they don't meet, if they don't get the grades that they want to get into the college that they want, they have a, they have a problem here with suicides. The kids jump off the high rises because they're devastated that they're not going to get what they try to achieve. They're that focused on education. You don't see that in America. We can't get kids to stay in school for just the first 12 years. Yeah, you know, no kidding. And, and trying to stay in school on a seven-hour day. <coughs> so that's, <clears throat> that's just the children. If you look at the adults, you're either in business and running a business, which is full-time, taking all of your time for a business, and you're trying to be, um, you're trying to get to the point where you can pay for your kids' colleges, and everything else. So this culture is absolutely busy. They don't want to be the best Koreans. They want to be the best in the world. And they're focused on that. What little time they have, they spend with core family group and friends. They take vacations with family and friends together. Okay, they're not, They don't have free time like we do to play on the Internet, get involved, chase them crazy stuff and ideas. They don't spend that time doing that. They're focused on success. So when they say they don't have time for that, they don't. They don't give it any time. What does that mean when I say they don't give it any time? Let me give you a perspective on this. My job has allowed me to make 20 trips to Japan. And I've got friends that I work with in Japan. And I've had a chance to talk to them about this, too. And Japan, when I see Japan, when I'm there, to me it appears like they're about three, three decades, 30 years more advanced than Korea. Okay? They came out of World War II prior to the Korean War. So they had more time to, you know, to, to make progress. So Japan, I see, is at a point to where they start to have free time on their hands. They start to be able to relax a little bit. They've been successful. Now they're starting to look at things on the Internet, things that are kind of strange, things that catch their interest, things that the West is looking at. And guess what? They start having some experiences. Oh, they start okay. reporting some sightings. Korea's not reporting sightings. I've had one or two that's been reported. That's it. It just doesn't happen here. So what is, what is this telling us when we have 400 or 500 a month being reported in the United States? You know, it's not the same around the world. These guys, when they say that, it's not accurate. 
you have to understand there's something making it different. And what is that difference? That difference is you're opening yourself up to it. You're looking for it. You're opening a door. This experience happens because you open a door to it. In our research with CE4 Research, we found three reasons that people have experiences. One, you ask for it. Not everybody does that, but I've come across people who ask for it. I was one of those people. I asked for it and I got it. Number two, those people who didn't ask for it, by interviewing them, we did find that they had unknowingly opened the door by dabbling in the occult, metaphysics, new age practices, paranormal. That also opened the door for their experiences. The third one was a little different. We had adults coming to us saying, I don't fit the first two. I said, what do you mean? They said, well, I had experiences since I've been five, six, seven years old. I remember those as a child. I couldn't have done one or two. We started going back and re-interviewing the experiencers. And we started asking them questions like, tell me about your family life. Tell me about what you remember about your parents. And what we found was the open door was coming from the parents. Mm. You know, this fits scripturally too. Yeah. Because what we found in scripture is it tells us, God's word tells us, the man is the head of the spiritual head of the household. But the man who's the spiritual head of the household is not keeping a spiritual covering over his family. His children are open to the wiles of the enemy also. That's right. And that's what we were finding. So this is all about an open door. Okay. You want these experiences? Just ask. You'll get them. And there's people promoting that. Um, Mr. Dr. Greer, he's promoting contact with these yeah. entities. Okay? He's not telling you they're demonic entities. He doesn't believe that. But we as believers know they are. He's actually helping you make that connection. That's dangerous. Yeah, definitely. I saw that in his uh, documentary, Serious, and, and it was it was it was it was promoted as this like nice, wonderful, bene benevolent thing that you know. They're, they're, but basically, what they're doing is they're praying to these spiritual entities. They're praying to the, these these fallen angelic creatures uh, ignorantly. You know, they 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 don't realize it. Uh, and, Absolutely. And yeah, and there, there's just all sorts of consequences that can that can come from that. Uh, Vic Shannon is asking question. Uh, what about the Raelian movement? And I'm probably going to butcher this name. Claude Maurice Marcel Vallahans experience. Wow. <clears throat> well, we know the Raelians have developed into a cult themselves. Um, yeah. A major cult following. There's a lot of different ones that are still out there that are quite old, but they're one of the older ones that are still around. His experience. Contact with the spirit. That are very way that they is through a people that like cops and a lot of times the experience uh, a lot of fear and breaking down. Okay, there comes in a higher entity. Uh, I, I, I hate to do it to you. Again. I, I'm so sorry. I hate I hate to do it to you again. That the the whole from the beginning of your answer up until now, it was just garbled audio. I was waiting for it to kind of clear out. It seems like it breaks up for like 30 seconds and then it's clear for you know 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, and and I, I I hate to interrupt you and and ask, but uh, what we what we were able to hear was uh, after you said it, it's it's one of the you know that. 
it, it's become a cult movement and it, it's one of it's one of the cults that are still around in this thing and then the rest of it was just uh we, we weren't able to hear it I, I hate to ask you can, can you can you start from the beginning yeah I, I think that what he is what he experienced was uh, very like the contact he experienced that yeah. we see about in literature very typical of the contact he experienced uh, the entities when they're dealing with a contact experience they're very seductive in their in their nature okay they make the person feel like they've been chosen like they've made very special they've been given special knowledge and where have we heard that before but that's right. the same lie from the garden right yeah um, you see the same tactic being used by the enemy all through history it's the idea of having special knowledge i know something you don't okay that hooks people um that has an effect on humans believe me uh and you see a lot of that in in the more fringe areas as information gets out there that is uh sensationalized people grab onto that and they think that they're now special because they can share something with somebody else that they don't know Right. It, 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 that's what hooks people, you know, and I, that's why I've tried to stay away from anything else except the research that I focused on, because you can get off on those tangents and it, it just breaks you down to where you, you don't have any key information. You're just relaying a lot, like you said earlier, a lot of what everybody else says. Right. But the, I tried to stay focused on what the research that we started with. And because of that, I believe that all of this we've been able to show here is we have the best evidence to show for what this is, what this entire phenomenon is, and now we've got the support of the actual government themselves backing us up, saying, yeah, we agree, we just call it something different. And that brings us right back to where, boom, we've got the most powerful tool to be able to witness with right now. We've got Christian disclosure on what this is. It's absolutely a phenomenal time to be living in, and and you're absolutely right. It is time for us Christians to get busy. Now is the time uh, to go out there, win some souls, win some new agers, uh, because they're they're at least they're already seeking. Like like Joe, I came out of new age uh, as well, and, and, and it's funny you hear it, it's very similar. Uh, testimonies being repeated because I have a very similar testimony to you. My co-author Stephen Bancars has a, uh, you know, we, we wrote a book about coming out of the new age and uh, he has a similar testimony. A lot of us that are now involved in Christian research type of things have come out of that and we have very similar testimonies, which means that there are new agers now who are willing to hear this stuff. And now that we actually have despite the fact that they call it something else, to, now that we have the, the, the support of the government even saying that this is this is a, a, a real deal, uh, it, it's just there's there's no more exciting time uh, to live in when it comes to this field of research and to you know be a Christian at the same time. Uh, well, uh, it, lo it looks like the, the questions have kind of dried up. I think you've answered everybody's questions and have blown everybody's mind. Uh, everybody on the chat, they're showing you a lot of love, Joe. They're they're just going nuts. This, this has been this has been so much fun. And thank you for. I mean, you you stayed on almost an extra hour uh, for for us, and I greatly appreciate that. I know the audience does as well. Uh, we got hundreds of people in the chat right now. This is great to see. Uh, one more time, in case somebody missed it, where can people find you online? Uh, look at your research, fo follow you online, uh, get in contact with you if they have a question or, or, or if they have an abduction experience, what, what are all your online outlets? Okay, the, uh, the research itself is on www.ce, the number four, research.com. You can catch me on Facebook, CE4 Research on Facebook. Um, what else we got? Uh, you want to email me personally? I'd be glad to have it. If you've got a testimony to share, even more better because the question I've been asking the secular realm is how many testimonies is it going to take for you to understand what we have here is real? And I just keep it. They're, they're still coming in. I get testimonies every week. You know, even if the past six years here in, in Korea, they keep coming in. Okay. And that's CE4 president at yahoo.com. You can contact me right through the email. I'll talk to you. Okay. You got more questions that you weren't able to get in? Answer the questions. Bring them on. And uh, 
Josh, I uh, hope sometime we can get together again, like we did in Roswell, and uh, chit chat. Maybe we need to do a book together. Oh hey, yeah, I uh, I am all up for it. I would love that. That that it would it would be an honor. Uh, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's 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 keep in contact with that. I I, uh, I I like that idea. And thank you so much for putting your personal email out there for people who have questions or if they want to send in. Uh, because I mean, there have been people in the chat saying that they've had uh, alien abduction, you know, uh, experiences and seen UFOs and have had all all sorts of things. And I, I think that because they know that there's something going on, it attracts them to this type of conversation like what we're having here. And so I really appreciate it, guys, in the chat. Uh, and if you're watching this in the archived version later, make sure to send in your email uh, to Joe, ce4president at yahoo.com. Uh, tell him your experience. It helps him in his ministry. It helps him gather research. And it helps you too, because you're able to share your story with somebody who's not going to call you crazy, who's not going to disbelieve you. Uh, and and it, it, it's it, it's therapeutic, if nothing else. But you're also talking with somebody who who um, has has been through this and, and knows how to deal with it, knows the answer on how to even make it stop. It's through the, the name and authority of of Jesus Christ. Joe, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we're, we'll definitely have to have you back on again. This has been an absolute blast, my brother. Well, thank you, Josh. It's been a pleasure. All right. Hang on the line and I'll, uh, I'll close this out here. Uh, that was Joe Jordan. Again, he gave all of his online information. If you missed it, just rewind a little bit and you can catch it again. Uh, but it is ce4research.com. Email him at ce4president at yahoo.com. Uh, absolutely phenomenal guest. And you are an absolutely amazing audience. Thank you so much for joining me on this Peck Underground Church. This has definitely been one of one of the more memorable ones for sure. Uh, and I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it's going to go down in, in history as such. Uh, so uh, thank you all so much. And a big thank you to Harmony and Barbara Briggs, uh, two wonderful moderators that we have tonight, uh, who's been who's been helping everybody in the chat, has been posting links, and is just always uh, just always been amazing. Faith Faithful moderators. Uh, we love you to death. And, and just to our amazing audience, we love all of you. And uh, yeah, until next time, we will have, uh, I believe it's Gary Wayne next Friday. I think that's January 4th. We'll have Gary Wayne. So make sure you, uh, you, you join us then. That'll be another live stream as always. So all that being said, thank you all so much for joining us yet again on Peck Underground Church. Until next time, love you all. Take care and God bless.